CERN Industries. Today I'd like to talk to you about an issue that we deal with frequently here at Wilkins, and that is to determine whether or not we have pressure reducing valve failure or if we're dealing with a thermal expansion condition within our plumbing system. Now the call is very typical, it's straightforward. We'll get a call from our customer and they'll indicate to us that they've recently installed a pressure reducing valve and they find that all during the day the pressure is absolutely fine, but overnight for some reason they're seeing a creep in the downstream pressure and they feel that the pressure reducing valve is defective. Well, we've come up with a way to determine whether or not you're dealing with a defective pressure reducing valve, or it could even be a pressure reducing valve that's fouled with debris, for example, or are we dealing with a thermal expansion condition? So to begin, let's, let's run a couple of tests on our plumbing system and we'll determine which it is, thermal expansion or regulator failure. Now to start this test, what we'll want to do is we're going to want to turn the water heater to the vacation setting. What that will do is it will prevent the burner from firing, but it won't put the pilot out such that you have to relight it later. So again, turn the burner on the water heater to the vacation setting. Now what we'll do is we simply want to attach a gauge to our plumbing system. We'll want to attach a gauge downstream of the pressure reducing valve. Quite frankly, any hose bib on the house, as long as it's down the downstream of the pressure reducing valve, will be fine. Now the type of gauge that I have here, this is a Wilkins HGI 25. And what this particular gauge has is an additional needle that will register the highest pressure that the gauge sees. So in this case, again, we'll go to a hose bib. We simply want to turn the hose bib on to relieve any excess pressure within the house. Shut the hose bib off. Again, we only leave that on for a few seconds. And now we'll attach our pressure gauge. Once we get our pressure gauge installed, we simply turn on the hose bib and we're going to give a period of, say, 15 minutes to allow the pressure reducing valve to creep. Typically, if you've got a pressure reducing valve failure, the, the uh, downstream pressure will rise very rapidly. But in this case, let's give the pressure regulator the benefit of the doubt. So we'll wait approximately 15 minutes. After that 15 minute period, we want to come back and take a look at our gauge. We want to see, has that gauge risen beyond the set point of the regulator? If it has, obviously we do have a problem with our pressure reducing valve. Most likely it would be fouling with debris on a new installation, or with an older installation it could be that the regulator has failed, i.e. worn rubber components internally, and the regulator would need a repair kit and brought back up to service again. On the other hand, if we see no rise in pressure, we now have eliminated the pressure reducing valve as the cause for the pressure rise. So what we'll want to do is run a check to see if it is thermal expansion. Now for the thermal expansion test, we want to go ahead and go back, turn the water heater back to its normal setting. Whatever you have it set to, set to previously, be it 140, uh, 130, whatever it was, go ahead and turn that water heater back on. Once we turn the water heater on, we're going to go into, say, the kitchen and open a hot water faucet and let that faucet run for a period of, say, oh, five minutes. What we're trying to do is deplete some of the water within the water heater so that the burner will fire and that water heater will cycle. After we run the hot water tap for a period of five to seven minutes, go ahead and shut that hot water off and immediately go outside and start watching your gauge. Now if the pressure begins to rise while we have the water heater cycling, that's an indication that the rise in pressure is due to thermal expansion and not pressure reducing valve failure. In the case of thermal expansion, there are a number of ways to control that pressure. In fact, if you look at our uh, One Zern YouTube channel, you will find a video that shows you how to control thermal expansion. So, I hope that you find this helpful. Again, this is a good method of determining whether or not we have pressure reducing valve failure or a thermal expansion condition within the home. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube OneZern channel. For more product information or to speak to a customer care representative, please visit our website at zern.com.